I feel like this is more like literary Akinator than it is literary. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, we're literary Akinator. That's what we're calling this now. This episode is Hello and welcome to the first bonus episode of Homestuck the Internet's Ulysses. I'm your co-host, Kira, your resident boyfriend, because my boyfriend's on the podcast today, so I'm the boyfriend now. You can find me at K-I-Y-Y-E on Tumblr and Patreon and K-I-Y-Y-E-S on Instagram. And I'm your co-host, Jamie, resident French minor. You can find me at jamietamar.wordpress.com and on Instagram as jamietamar. That's J-A-I-M-E-T-A-M-A-R. And like Kira said, today we're joined by his boyfriend, Matt, who is the third third of our trio. For listeners, it's actually kind of weird that the podcast is just Kira and I because the three of us with Matt just like exist together all the time. Hi, yeah, I'm resident guest boy, Matt. You can find me at Token Queer on Instagram. Token Queer spelled exactly like you would think. So in this bonus episode of Hachu, we will be playing a fun and exciting game that we're calling Literary 20 Questions, followed by another fun and exciting game that we invented called Impromptu Comparative Literature. Matt, would you like to explain to us what the purpose of these wonderful and delightful games are? Yeah, so Kira, Jamie, and I are each going to think of a book, but not say the title, and we'll guess one another's books, one at a time. Once we've guessed the books, we'll do some cursory... Jay didn't write the rest of the sentence for me. Um, <laughs> you're writing the rest of the sentence. It's okay. We're doing cursory, cursory comparative, comparative literature, literature um, based on what we know about the books that not all of us have necessarily read. Yeah. And also the important thing is that we can only ask sort of like thematic like literature questions. Like you can't be like, is the cover of the book blue? Yeah. And we're not really keeping track of how many questions we ask either. And they don't have to be yes or no questions. So it's really not 20 questions at all. It's just literary. Yeah, I don't know why you call it that. Literary guessing. It's the idea of that. I mean, we're limited to three guesses, right? Yeah, we're limited yes. to three guesses per person. So that we aren't just like list everything on their Goodreads. <laughs> yeah. Them to get it. We've played this like three times already. It's a lot of fun. Yes. Um, also, PSA, we are recording this in person in Kira's living room because I'm home from spring break. Um, oh, and we're doing a bonus episode because I didn't do the reading because <laughs> I'm in a show next week and I'm busy, but we'll be back to regularly scheduled Ulysses and Homestuck in the next episode. Yeah. And in the meantime, you get things that aren't Homestuck and Ulysses in case you don't know anything about those. Wow. Why would anyone want to read anything ever that's not either Homestuck or Ulysses? <laughs> well, I I guess I haven't read Ulysses, so I guess I've never read anything that's not Homestuck ever. <laughs> <laughs> you read? We, I guess we know what all of our 20 questions books are going to be. Oh, yeah. yeah. Homestuck. <laughs> Wait, we're going to have one repeat because there's only two books. <laughs> <laughs> one of them's Homestuck. <laughs> Um, who do we want to guess first? Whose book do we want to guess first? I don't think we've done Matt first. Oh, yeah. We did you first. We've done me first. All right. I guess I'll go first. You have oh, a book boy. in mind? Yes, I do. I barely have a book in mind. I have a book in mind. I don't know if it's going to be the best session, but, you know, we're going to go with You're it. So I have valid. This might give it away, but I haven't read it in a long time. Oh, so I forget some parts of it, but, you know, we'll make it happen. Okay. I have a question for you. Uh... How much does the setting of your book as act as an agent of the theme? <laughs> Very much so. Really now? Very much so. For context, this, for context, this is the question I always ask. Yeah. This yeah, the setting is super important. And like the it it the setting is the setting is it's the whole thing. Okay. Are the characters human? For the most part. How many main characters are there? How many narrators are there? How many narrators? One. It's like an omni, omnipresent, like an om, omniscient. omniscient. That's what I mean. Yes. Okay. Omnipresent. Um, uh, I am the omnipresent narrator. <laughs> Me. I narrate omnipresent. your life as well as this book. <laughs> that's just homestuck. <laughs> that's right. just that's just homestuck. But uh, yeah, there are. You could make a case for you can make a case for a number of main characters. There's at least four. Okay. Is it, 
I feel like this is a cheap question, but like, is it a contemporary setting? Is it is it historical? Is it? I wouldn't. Is the time period in which it's set relevant to the setting? To parts of it, not. I'm going to say that the the time period influences the story for sure, but not all of the setting. The time period influences the story, but not all of the setting. Yeah, that's how I'd describe that. <gasps> <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Okay. Um, is it fiction? Yes. Is it fantasy? Yes. So it's like genre fiction. It's not like literary fiction. Yes. <laughs> like a classic TM. Um, what grade would you say it's written for? I mm, I wouldn't I wouldn't describe it as a classic TM, as in like classics. Mm -hmm. You know, I forget when I first read this. I wouldn't say it's like geared towards a mature audience. But you said four main characters. Yes, that is that is what I would say. Not three, right? No. Okay. Yeah. Was... <laughs> what? Harry Potter. Oh. Um. Well, I ask about narrators because I was like, if it's just tearing no doubt, I'll cry. No. <laughs> it's not. Did you like this book when you read it? Yes. Okay. Do you talk about it a lot? Not as much as I do other things, but yes. What should we ask more about? Characters and setting, probably. Well, do the characters, what's the conflict type? People versus other group of people. Like group versus group, group or individual? versus group. But not society? Is it like ideological or is it like tribes? Not like actually tribes, but is it the idea that like this group hates this other group or is it like communism hates capitalism? Uh, more personal than communism hates capitalism. It could be person versus group. Yeah. But like the person is not like alone like the person is part of a group but the rest of the group doesn't really matter as much okay <laughs> you're sure it's not harry potter um it it's it it's fantasy though right yeah would you describe it as a coming of age novel i was just gonna <laughs> yeah, ask that. i mean i wouldn't say that that's the point of the novel at all but there okay. are coming of age storylines within the novel okay what are some of the like main themes um family Faith, religion in general. Is it the Bible? <laughs> that wasn't no. the <laughs> Yes. I wouldn't say it's geared towards a mature audience. <laughs> there are coming of age themes in the Bible. More narrators. I'm going to tell you it is literally the Bible. <laughs> no, just one book of the Bible. Just oh, one. that would be a power move. It's specifically Revelation. Specifically <laughs> Revelation. Nah, just kidding. Revelation. No. Oh, right, it's just one. There's just only, there's only one Revelation. Just one. Only one only person have... has ever revelationized. <laughs> revelationized. Revel? Reveal? This is my new band called The French Revelation. <laughs> That's a good something name. Yeah, our new podcast. The French Revelation? Yeah. Okay, does the setting involve water? There, there is water in the setting. I don't. What are you trying to ask? Is about it like that? important? Like, is there a scene where there is water there? If water's in the book, it's a symbol. But like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not asking yes. if water's a symbol. If the water's in the book, it's a symbol. Yeah. Um. There is. There is a lot. There's. There's a lot of water. I think this it's, is. Sorry. Continue. Well, it's not like it. There. There. There are definitely scenes where water is a big part of it. I feel like this is more like literary Akinator than it is literary. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, we're literary Akinator. Akinator. That's what we're calling this now. This episode yes. is bonus episode literary Akinator. Yes, literary Akinator. Does it have a lot of illusions? Yes. Is the whole book a big illusion? Is it a metaphor for another thing that happened, like in history or another book? I I wouldn't call oh, the gory. whole thing a metaphor. Okay. But the whole like. So it's not like Animal Farm. No, okay. no, not to that extent. It's not Definitely. analogies. Or something. No, it's not yeah, an analogy. That's the word I meant to say. Um, it's not an analogy, but there are lots of allusions to a specific thing. Is oh. the thing Greek mythology? No. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking that earlier. <laughs> no, no. But there's definitely that's not omniscient narration. Oh right. Yeah, that's first person. I forgot we were. I forgot omniscient. Are the characters? How old are the characters? The majority of the characters 
are adult age, but the main characters are younger. Oh, wait. You said, oh, four main characters. And you said it's fantasy. Is there a character that's a mouse? Maybe. <laughs> Is it Narnia? Oh, Maybe. That <laughs> may have. so long. Wait, uh, do we have to guess a specific book? I mean, can you? Um, Is it the Dawn Treader? So no. You said water? No. Oh. Is it... Is there a wardrobe? Yes. <laughs> is it the lion which is a wardrobe? wardrobe? Yes. Okay. How funny would it have been if I had said specifically the last battle and then made that joke about Revelation? <laughs> oh! <laughs> that would have been so perfect. Okay, this is a perfect opportunity to tell the story I heard from my friend about how apparently C.S. Lewis is an atheist and then J.K. Rowling converted him to Christianity. J.R.R. Tolkien. Yeah. <laughs> 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 J.K. Rowling converted C.S. Lewis to Christianity, guys. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Yeah, anyway, but J.R.R. Tolkien, J.R.R. Tolkien was Catholic, and then he converted C.S. Lewis to Christianity, but C.S. Lewis was like, I'm not about the whole Catholicism thing, and he became Anglican, which is basically Catholic, but, like, slightly to the left. <laughs> it's Catholic, but you, you're you willing to let Henry VIII have a divorce. <laughs> It's Catholic with the king instead of the pope is the way this friend described it to me. That I haven't heard that story, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was correct. I need to read the book about them. I can't believe J.K. Rowling can believe <laughs> <laughs> It's like that meme where it's like, and that boy was Albert Einstein. <laughs> and, that, yeah. and it was J.K. Rowling. That's a mood. <laughs> All right. Who else has a book? My turn. Wait, no, I don't have a book. <laughs> I have a book. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, would you say that this <laughs> setting is an agent of the themes or whatever your question it always is? Not a whole lot, actually. Yes, but the the book is actually sort of imposing a theme slash message onto the setting. So, oh. is it? Would you describe it as a coming of age novel? No. Is it a novel? Yes. Are the characters human? Yes. Are the characters adults? Yes. How many main characters are there? Two, debatably one. How many narrators are there? One. It, first person? Yes. Is the narrator the main character? Debatably so. Is it set in the 20th century? Yes. Is it set in the 20s? Yes. yes. Is it Gatsby? Yes. <laughs> 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 I was hoping you would sort of think like, no, that's too easy, and ask some yeah, more, that's like, what I was thinking, broad but... and exciting questions before we got to is it set in the twenties? But <laughs> I guess I guess I didn't fool you. <laughs> I feel like you're either way too obvious or like or... Wait. <laughs> you did. Julius <laughs> Caesar was so easy. All right, I, I, uh... I can pick another book later. That's harder, but let's do. Jamie. Well, what do we have? Narnia and Gatsby. Gatsby. Comparing those is gonna be a little hard. I think. I think mine can like tie it together. Not really, but like there, there's like mine has like thematic overlap with both of them. So, um, is yours about religion? Not really. Is yours about homosexuality? It features homosexuality. Oh, <laughs> well, not quite homosexuality, but there's definitely queer in it, queer characters. Okay, so it's not Dorian Gray. No, is it <laughs> Tara Ignota? No. How much is the setting an agent <laughs> of the theme? Um. Well, there's. Two several settings oh. that are important. They are they don't like you could you could set it somewhere else, but it would be considered an AU. But it wouldn't like like I can't think like you know how like Terragnota. If you set it anywhere else, it wouldn't make any sense. You yes. could take this book and change change certain things so that it would still arguably be the same book in a different setting, but you would have to change some things, just like cultural context, I guess. Mm. Is it fantasy? Is it is it no. fiction? It is fiction. It's not fantasy. Would the cultural aspects be like Western culture? Yes, definitely. Got it. What's the narration style? Um, there's like several chapters and each chapter has a different narrator. Well, there's like three chapters in each chapter. Three chapters sort in the of? whole book? Like the the book oh, is divided into three parts. It's divided into like three or four parts, I think, and it like there's like two narrators. There's two narrators. Like alternates. Sometimes within a sentence. Sort of. That, um, don't follow that one too far. You'll go down a rabbit hole, but it does happen in the book. Is this book set in a historical yes, setting? Yes, very much so. Is it set Ooh. in a county? 
Uh, would it be during the Holocaust? No. Okay, that ruined the idea I had. Okay. I was thinking Faulkner. Were you thinking all the light we cannot see? Yes, I was. That would have been a good one, but no. Because, like, with the two-day, I thought it was yeah. the girl and death, like. No, that would be the book thief. Oh, that's what I was thinking. All the light we cannot see also has two narrators. It's like the blind girl and then the, the German yeah. guy. Yeah, I haven't read any of them. I've just heard a lot. You should them. read the book thief. And all the light we cannot see, but the book thief. I have so many opinions about the book thief. They're all good. Would you describe this novel as a coming of age novel? No, the characters are like, they're young adults, but like they're adults. Do you like this book? I had opinions, but I didn't dislike it. <laughs> does it feature a prominent historical figure? It does. Is it the passion? It is. <laughs> <laughs> I got it just from the opinion. <laughs> That's my, what's her name? Jeanette Winterson. Jeanette Winterson. Yeah, um, not, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, and The Passion by Jeanette Winterson, which you should all read all those because they're all good. In that order. Just in that kidding. order. In that well, order. Yeah. honestly, Actually, yeah. Actually, yeah. Like, yeah like the, the way life goes, yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like Narnia, if you're into fantasy, you have to read Narnia. Like, it's so good. If you're into literary fiction, like, you have to read Gatsby because it's really good. But if you're not into literary fiction, I can see how people would find it maybe boring. And if you're not into fantasy, Narnia, I guess, would just be not worth your time. The Passion is, like, advertised as a romance. I feel like it's more historical fiction. And I liked the, there was, like, a girl in it who liked women. And so I was, like, all there for that. But, and there's a lot of, like, cool stuff. It's, like, I just love that, like, Southern Europe aesthetic. Like, South Italy, South Spain in books and i had that because villanelle is from venice yeah the passion i haven't finished it yet because i'm horrible and i don't have the audiobook which means that i don't finish it but it's very sexy and it also is set during the napoleonic wars which are very sexy yeah but i feel like it kind of ties it together because it has the similar fa- it doesn't it's not really fantasy but it's got like the whimsicalness of narnia i guess but also the like wow i hate rich peopleness of um the great gatsby because mm. one of the things about the passion like with villanelle who i love is that she like falls in love with this woman who's like really really rich and then the woman is like no we can't be together because i have a husband and she's like which is exactly what happens with the great gatsby yes it is what happens great Gatsby yeah but it's not like I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly in the passion she's like I do actually like my husband but Daisy's just like kind of beholden to him yeah mm-hmm. she doesn't really like like him. Oh, Buchanan. Daisy oh. Buchanan. could you draw parallels between that and then like you've read the whole Narnia series yes you know have you yes you know how, like, Susan, this is Narnia spoilers, Susan eventually, like, stops going yes. to Narnia, and she's like, ha remember those yes. games we played as a kid? I feel like, could you draw a parallel between that and Daisy Buchanan? Yeah, oh. you definitely could, because, like, Susan, like, like, giving up Narnia and going to have, like, a normal life TM. Yeah. Like, that is definitely, like, similar, because, like, when that life tries to come back, and Lucy's like, hey, will you come back to Narnia? How she's like, oh, that, like, childish thing that I never really cared about in the first place? Uh, no. I feel like those parallels could definitely be there, like, her and Daisy. Like, she doesn't actually, the her quote-unquote normal life isn't actually that important to her, and it's not actually that meaningful, but she just feels obligated to, because that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. So Gatsby is Narnia. Yeah. <laughs> Gatsby would be her Narnia. And that actually, like, now that I think about it, I think that happens, like, at the end of the passion is that they're, like, do we want to live, like, with Villanelle's parents in Venice? And then Henri. 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 Henry is all, like, no, I have to, like, go back to France or something like that. I don't really remember it. I read this book on ebook, and whenever I read ebooks, I, like, don't really. I read it on ebook on my phone. So I, like, didn't really process it as a real book the mm. whole time. And my opinions are just that, like, it was good, but there was some part... Well, I don't like romances, so I was hesitant from the beginning. Um, and just some of the syntax is wonky. And it took itself a bit seriously. But, like I said, when during the literary Akinator, there are some times where, like, not quite in the middle of a sentence, but, like, the narrator will switch in the middle of a paragraph, and suddenly you realize, like, at the end of the paragraph, the narrator who you thought was Henry says something that, like, only Villanelle would say... And then you're like, oh, wait, that's so cool. Because, like, not knowing whether it's Villanelle or Henry changes, like, the entire meaning of the paragraph. Interesting. And also Henry was, like, arguably in love with Napoleon. 
<laughs> Arguably. Wrong. Well, it's not quite as explicit as Villanelle, like, and her girl, which made me so happy. I was not expecting that. Whenever I'm, people are, read this romance to me, the last thing I'm expecting is, like, good queer representation. So sexy. Yeah. That's really sexy. The um, queer representation, but then, like, not quite all the way there is, like, Gatsby, so. Mm. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And Narnia is no queers. Well, Mr. Tumnus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Arguments could be made that a lot of them are queer, but it's it's there's no like textual evidence. Honestly, Lucy, so queer. Lucy is gay culture. Okay, I have a really stupid question. When were they even alive? Like what? Tolkien and Lewis? Oh. Is that like like early twentieth century or like eighteen yes. hundreds? Early twentieth. Let me look up. Because uh The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe is set right be- in the beginning right. of World War one two right. one or two. two 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 because they're yes. sending everyone to the countryside yes a lot of which more to be set right at the beginning of world war Two. so that because they been... knew it was happening yes so they're probably writing it after yes i always think of them as like from the 1800s i don't know why they would fit there they would fit in the 1800s <laughs> spiritually they're from the 1800s c.s lewis was 1898 to 1963 yeah so like okay. right sort of turn of the century there okay or or a little growing up at the turn of the century yes okay list some themes in your books religion religion family (laughs) is it the bible (laughs) i mean is it it not (laughs) you're not wrong yeah (laughs) wardrobe is just the gospels really if you think about it yeah um gatsby is like materialism being beholden to heterosexual society <laughs> <laughs> that could be a theme in the passion a little that's kind of a, actually yeah that's the theme in the passion with um villanelle's girl so the, the main character's name is villanelle it's very sexy um villanelle's girl is like my husband and she's like but i love you and she's like my sexuality husband. is real mm. they never actually i don't think she and her girl ever actually like together they just kind of like it's like did you get to that part where she's all like describing what it's like and they're like lying next to each other and like just touching noses and she's like i that i actually think that might be a, an allusion to count monte cristo you know oh. the grandfather yes. who's like paralyzed can only yes. his eyes and they talk about how like his entire soul comes through and for, through his eyes in a way that doesn't in someone who's not paralyzed. And that's kind of what Villanelle's talking about, where she's talking about, like, this woman that she, like, really, really wants to, like, you know, be with. And mm. But they, like, don't let each of themselves touch each other, so they just lie, like, touching their noses. And she's talking about, like, how all that emotion was, like, carried in their noses. I don't think it's their ah. noses or, like, their hands, but, like, some one small point of contact and how that, like... All was... the lesbian sexual tension travels through her nose. <laughs> <laughs> my lesbian homing beacon is in my nose. <laughs> it really is. It really do be like that. Um, want to compare more or want to do another round? Oh, let's do another round, mm-hmm. yeah. And yeah. hopefully we pick books that are more comfortable. Well, well I, those are books for fun. I think that was fine. Um, but also, like, whoever goes first, which can be me, I guess, then everyone else can, like, think of a book that could be comparable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we go in reverse. Okay. Do you have a book? Nope. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. How much would you say <laughs> the setting is an agent of a, of a theme? It's only relevant because the setting is, like, like, he visits, like, a, like a site, like, a historical, like, site. And that's like important, but you can make an AU of it super easily. It's a it's a more of like a parable or a fable than it is like a novel. Though technically it's a novel, and that should huh. give it away. Interesting. Have I not read it? No, you haven't. Is it The Alchemist? It is. <laughs> <laughs> that would okay. be so easy. <laughs> um, let me think of one. Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Hmm. 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 Does it have to be fiction? Like, does it have to be a? Just as long as it has it, you can you can think of some way to connect it to the alchemist. But the reason the alchemist is good is because you can connect it to anything. I don't know if you can connect it to this. So don't do that. <laughs> Wait, but it's really funny. <laughs> what is it boring in an Ireland? No. Do you guys want to try and guess this book? Sure. 
How much would you say the setting is an agent of the theme? There's no setting. No setting? Well, actually, the setting is the whole world. So the setting is the agent. What? <laughs> How many main characters are there? The, the whole world is the main character. What? Should, should this be obvious? No. You'll never guess it. <laughs> then why are you have to guess it? it? It's nonfiction, I guess. It's a, like, it's a... Is it Apollo's Iliad? <laughs> no. It's, no, it's real. It's a real text. It's a text. It's not a novel. It's a about the world. About is this something you read in AP Euro? <laughs> yes, actually. <laughs> is it about? Is it written by a historical figure? Yes. Have I read it? I don't know. I don't think so, actually. I actually haven't read all of it, so I'm not that qualified. I'll pick another one. We don't have to compare this. I just think it's funny. Is it that coffee paragraph that you made us read? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not the coffee. About the clear skin. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Unless no. you wish to be wakeful. It is a very, very historically important theoretical text. The Communist Manifesto. Yes. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That was a joke. <laughs> yes, the Communist Manifesto. That's my book. <laughs> the theme is the proletariat seizing the means of production. <laughs> Are the characters an agent of the theme? <laughs> The setting is the whole world. <laughs> I can go as you pick another one. Okay. Um, to what extent would you say that this setting is an agent of the theme? Um, I would say that... Ah, mm, it's actually an interesting question. Um, yeah, it is. I'm yeah. to keep asking it. No, because this, this setting is... I would say this setting is an agent of the theme in the fact that like this setting isn't... It, it's important that there's really not a setting. Okay. Huh. huh. Not directly, I would say. Is it fiction? Yes. Is it science fiction? No. Huh. Fantasy? No. It's more like kind of like theoretical fiction? Like Sure. Speculative fiction. Favorite genre? Mm -hmm. Very good subreddit. Is it speculative fiction? I'm not quite sure what that means. It's but... like fiction. It's like sci-fi or fan. Like fiction. It's like what if dragons were real? What if humans had robot arms? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it in that category. What is the narrative perspective? I I would say like third person limited. I suppose. Okay. Is there one main character? No. Oh, are there multiple main characters? Yes. Well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> There's not one, but there's not multiple. <laughs> there's no. No, there's characters. multiple main characters. Hmm. Um, are the main characters human? Yes. Do the main characters live on Earth? Yes. They could have not. Is it historical? It could be. Oh, you said it's important that there is no such. Hmm. Is it a novel? No. Is it a short story? No. Is it a play? Yes. Is it Rosa Crescent Guildstern? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, really... I knew I knew as soon as you got the form you would know it. Yeah, I was like, what could it possibly be? And then Yeah, yeah. There, it is important that there is no setting. Yeah. Yeah. And like how, what would you say for like perspective like narrative perspective for that one? It's I, a play. It's a play. play. Yeah. 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 God, I have to actually think of a book. <laughs> so so far we have The Alchemist and Rosencrantz and the Guildenstern are dead. By Tom Stoppard. Yes. Okay. I have chosen. How much would you say the setting is an agent of the theme? Um, the setting is like written the this or what does that even mean? The setting, I don't know what the thing I was saying <laughs> meant. <laughs> what were you gonna say? I meant to say the setting is just the time in which it was written. So mm -hmm. I don't I don't think the setting is really an intentional reflection of the theme. Like it could only exist in the setting. Like I think the story exists in the setting by virtue of it literally being from the setting and like, being written then. Like, at the time, it was just realistic fiction? Yeah. Well, I don't think anyone thought it was actually realistic, but, like, at the time, yes. At the time, it was plausible-ish fiction. Uh, what genre is it? Classics. Is it an epic? No. How old is it? What, Very. What? Many, many old. Super, very many. But it's old. not an epic. It is, is it not novel? an epic. It's not what? What? Is it a novel? It is not a novel. Is it a play? It is a play. Greek? Yes. Damn it, you guys are going to get it so fast. 
Is there a character that stabs his own eyes out? Yes. It's Oedipus. <laughs> that oh, was so bad. Was bad. I didn't, wait, Oedipus is a play? Yes. What? I thought it was an epic. No. no it's a play. It's called the Oedipus Cycle. Like, yeah, it's a cycle like of three plays. Like the, isn't it like the Odysseus Cycle also called the... The no? Homeric Epic Cycle is also... Like, oh, but it's called the Epic Cycle to specify. The so but the, the story of Oedipus is not like... I don't... I'm like you can like I'm not sure about this because I'm not a classics major yet, but um I don't think Sophocles invented it. Like I think he just adapted the story that already existed. Um, Into but, a play. Yeah. Also, it's not like long enough to be an epic. Anyways, the story itself isn't. Yeah, it's not that long. Yeah, it's really not. It doesn't have like characters. So but we have the alchemist. Roads to Grant the Guild and Certain Are Dead and Oedipus Rex. Oedipus Rex. Oh boy. This will be fun. I'm not starting this time. Um, well, I haven't read The Alchemist, but, like, The Meaning of Life and Existentialism. Well, The Alchemist has a lot of meaning of life stuff. Not as much existentialism, but The Alchemist is all, like, the meaning of life is to accomplish what you really want to do. Oedipus has a lot of existentialism in terms of, like, fate and free will. Because the whole idea, Jamie, do you know anything about Oedipus? Motherfucker. (laughs) (laughs) You're not wrong. You're not. <laughs> That's all wrong. I know. Well, basically, uh, there's a prophecy that... Yeah, okay. This is what I know. There's a prophecy that, like, he's gonna kill his dad. Yep. And so his dad is all, like, gotta get rid of him. So they, like, sends him away. And then somehow he ends up, like, in a place and this woman's like, hey, you're cute. I have a son the same age as you. And he's like, oh, how cool. And then they, like, have kids together. And he, like, kills his dad anyway by, like, falling and knocking him off a cart or something. The end, you kind of lost it, but <laughs> no, well, what happens, okay, the first, the beginning was right, yes, and then he hears about, again, about the prophecy that he's going to kill his dad and freaks out because he really likes his adopted dad, mm. so he's like, ah, I gotta just leave, and like, and then if I'm not, like, with my dad, I can't kill him, so he leaves, and then he ends up, yeah, killing his dad from, in, like, a car. He's real, he's like, yeah, he's he's real actual him. dad. Um, and, but then he, on his way, just like traveling, he goes to Thebes and then the Sphinx is there and then the Sphinx is all like, answer me this riddle. And then he answers the riddle. It's like the, what walks on one leg, four legs in the morning. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, whatever it is. That four one. legs in the uh, morning. Four legs in the morning, two legs in the afternoon. Three, um, legs, three, legs, three at legs at night. Yeah. And then he's like, knows it. Cause he's a genius and shit. And then the Sphinx is like, oh, bye. Guess you got to be king of Thebes now. Yeah. Isn't that how it goes? And before Creon had been like, hey, if anyone solves the Sphinx thing, they can be the king and also have uh, Yocasta as their wife. Yeah. And then Oedipus shows up and he's like, hey, I did it. And they're like, whoa, you have a wife now. And he's like, cool, a wife. Um, And then they are married, but then it's like, she's his mom. So, but it, it's like the whole time everyone's like, dude, you know, that's your mom, right? And she's like, you're lying. No. And then Teresa is like, that's literally your fucking mom. And he's like, no. And then at the end, he actually realizes it. And he freaks out so bad that he stabs his eyes out. Right. So, yeah, he doesn't want to li- He can't escape his fate. And, and then he's like, try- it's, it's like, it's really similar to Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, actually. Like, yeah. Like, really similar. Like, they keep trying to do things and then just end up doing the other thing. That yeah, was supposed to be, like, the, the fate thing. Following the story, anyway. Yeah. It's actually really interesting. Because the Alchemist is kind of like that, but, like, in a happy way. It's like... The alchemist is like you're fated to do what you want to do most, and it's like, like, I mean, one of the things I like about it, shocker, is like the self honesty stuff. But it's like shocker. There's this guy you meet at the beginning, like the side character. You don't really meet him. They just talk about him. Who's like a baker, and it's like he really wants to like, I don't know what it is. Like he wants to like go to Africa, like for fun or something like that. Like that's his dream. But he just keeps telling himself he's gonna like save up money and be a baker. So now he's just convinced himself that all he wants to do is be a baker. And it's the idea that, like, you have to, the universe is set. And then, okay, later on, better example, the main character, Santiago, is, like, in an oasis. And he gets, like, these omens about, like, what's going to happen to the oasis. And they're like, wow, you can read omens. You can be, like, the spiritual advisor of the oasis. And he's like, I don't know if I should do it. Hold on. Can you say that word again? Oasis? Omen? No, oasis. Oasis? I feel like you're saying oasis, like, with a glottal. Oasis? Yeah, I think you're saying that. Wait, at the beginning or in the middle? In the middle, after the O. Oasis? Oasis. Yeah, I feel like you're saying Oasis. It's really funny. Continue. It's it's in hiatus. English doesn't like vowels on their own. Hiatus means you say the two vowels separately instead of as a diphthong. But anyway, 
Um, he's at the <laughs> Oasis, and then he's like, they're like, spiritual advisor. And he's like, cool, should I do that? And then he talks to, like, the alchemist, and the alchemist is like, if you don't do it, then, like, he's like, should I do it, or should I go to the pyramids and, like, find my treasure, which is, like, the point of the story. And the alchemist is like, if you don't go get, like, the, the reason you're seeing omens now about the fate of the Oasis is because the omens are actually pointing you towards your treasure and keeping you safe at the Oasis is gonna help you eventually get to your treasure. But if you don't fulfill your, like, lifelong journey of finding your treasure, then all you're gonna do, then eventually the Amen, the Amens, the <laughs> omens will, like, ignore you. And then you'll be, like, lost without purpose in life because the omens are ignoring you because you didn't fulfill your personal legend when the universe said that it was time tm so uh, the alchemist is kind of like a more happy existentialist i guess because it's like yes you were fated to do something but you're fated to do like what you really want to do yeah i feel like oedipus rex is sort of the opposite of that where it's oedipus rex the message about fate is more like if you don't do what fate commends you to do you will die mm-hmm. you know and like yeah. her, fate is inevitable there's no point in a board like mm. but in like a like, Oedipus's fate sucks. Like, he obviously doesn't want to, like, sleep with his mom, you know? Yeah. Um, and I feel like Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, like, it's very, like, purposefully ambiguous about that. Yeah. Like, it never actually answers the questions about, like, do we have free will? Is fate controlling us? It's just sort of asking those questions and posing them to the audience. But, like not making it obvious either way and not making it positive or negative just like driving home the fact that like we don't know if we have control or not mm-hmm. yeah and to me oedipus is like a whole lot about hubris where like maybe things wouldn't have ended up so fucking badly if he hadn't been an idiot and like refused to listen to any of the prophets who tried to tell him that his life was going to soon be a disaster like it's just warning against hubris so yeah, I forget exactly where I was going with this. So the moral of all three stories, well, maybe not Rosencrantz so much, but the moral of Oedipus and the Alchemist is listen to extra planar signs. <laughs> What's the word yes. for like divine? Well, it's also, I think Oedipus is also like, don't have the audacity to believe that you're like above the gods. Yeah. Because that's what all Greek myths are about. <laughs> you're not yeah, wrong. one of the things I like about the Alchemist, I'm pretty sure Paul Coelho was pretty like Christian, but the Alchemist like the main character is like was gonna be a priest so he's like i guess i'm christian but he's not like he's not like oh i'm christian love jesus all the time it's just like every time he has to pray he's like i guess i'll pray to jesus but he meets like i mean he's in like south of spain and like africa so he like most of the characters are actually most of the characters are muslim and he's like fine that's sexy yeah in oedipus everyone is greek (laughs) in Rosencrantz and Guildenstern they don't really mention religion yeah they don't can't think of any religious bits in it um well give us this day our daily yeah thing. how like, Guildenstern always like parodies the lord's prayer yeah and says the first line but messes up the last word to match whatever or to rhyme with whatever Rosencrantz had just said which one's the smart one Guildenstern, Guildenstern. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been so funny if we said the opposite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Rosencrantz is Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah, Daniel Radcliffe um, had the smart one. Yeah, that's what we that the, uh, that's what that play was. Daniel Radcliffe and the smart one are dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just Harry Potter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Does that make Ron the play? <laughs> that's so weird. I mean, Ron is Alfred. Yeah. <laughs> Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> what? In real- <laughs> do, do, you know Al- do you remember Alfred? No. The little, like, the twink. Oh, the little, yeah. <laughs> he's the twink, where it's unclear whether he's a twink or a bit like pedophilia. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, it's both. That was our comparative literature, boys. That was a really fun game. We should yeah. do that again sometime. Yeah. Thank you for listening to our bonus episode. First bonus episode? Yep, first bonus episode. Definitely uh, not the last bonus episode. Um, thanks you. for having me on the show. Yeah, thanks yeah, for coming on the show. so much fun. You can find more information about the podcast at htiu.tumblr.com, and you can listen to the podcast on Spotify, iTunes, and htiu.podbean.com. We're on iTunes? We are on iTunes. On I iTunes. was not aware of this development. iTunes yes. and Spotify, and I'm trying to get us onto Google Play. Oh, also, 
Kira and I will be at Anime Boston on Saturday, April 20th, dressed up as Andrew Hussey and James Joyce. Yes, we will be. And if you come see us, we'll probably have like an, I don't know, HTIU pin to give you or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. We'll think of something. Business cards. Yeah. Business cards. Stickers? Well, we won't be at AB. We'll be in Prudential Center, but we'll have something for you. So we'll come something. see us. Yeah, we'll be in the pre. Like, we'll be, we probably won't be. We'll be next to Barnes & Noble, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just find the books and we'll be there. <laughs> that is a really good bumper sticker. Find the books, find the books and, and we'll be, be there. there. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great Thanks too. for listening. Bye. See you next week.